Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Robert from The Horizon and in this video, as the title suggests, I'm going to be going into a little bit more detail on the difference between open loop and closed loop in the context of car operation as well as car tuning. This is a topic that we had briefly gone over in my question and answer video where I interviewed Eugene Turkov and fielded him some of the questions that you guys have been submitting to me here on this channel as well as on my Instagram. And I promised you guys I would be going into more depth on some of those topics, including today's video on open versus closed loop operation. This is a topic that a lot of you guys have been requesting that I jump into and discuss in a little bit more depth. So let's start off by talking about closed loop loop operation, which is also known as feedback control. The first stage in this control loop when we're in closed loop operation is going to be a fuel calculation from your ECM. Your ECM is going to calculate the amount of fuel that your car needs based off of the programmed fuel tables, your long and short term fuel trims, and that's also going to receive input from a variety of sensors to make that calculation. Those sensors include your MAF sensor, your MAP sensor if your car has one, as well as when it's in closed loop operation, um, it'll be receiving inputs from your AFR sensor, and then it also has inputs from camshaft as well as crankshaft position sensors as well. All of this, of course, is dependent on the car and what sensors are installed on your particular vehicle. The engine is able to control how much fuel is going into your engine by modulating something called the pulse width of the injectors, or how long the injector is open during each of its cycles. If you have a long pulse width, that means you're throwing a lot of fuel into the engine. That may be the case, for instance, if you are trying to do a really heavy pull or it might have a short pulse width when it doesn't need a lot of fuel, for instance, when you're at idle or cruising. So you're gonna inject a certain amount of fuel into the engine, then you're of course gonna have combustion, and then the exhaust gases are gonna be pushed through the exhaust pipe, and then the O2 content of that exhaust is gonna be picked up by something called your AFR sensor. When you are in closed loop, the engine is constantly gonna be looking for feedback from this AFR sensor to understand how well combustion occurred within the combustion chamber. The engine is able to use this feedback from your AFR sensors to be able to make adjustments to your fueling dynamically. This is reflected in your short-term fuel trims. So if under a certain driving condition you're running a little bit lean, your short-term fuel trim will then reflect that and tell the car that you need to add additional fuel whenever you're in that condition under that particular load in RPM. And then of course if there is a trend that develops within that particular box of your load versus RPM table, then you'll be making an adjustment to your long-term fuel trim tables to be able to reflect that trend. The car also uses this feedback mechanism to ensure stoichiometric combustion so that you're getting efficient operation of the engine. It also is used for emissions compliance where it also integrates the lower O2 sensors to see how well the catalytic converters are running. And then some cars are able to use this feedback to also ensure the safety of the engine under heavy load operations where you wanna be running the car a little bit richer and that gets reflected in richer AFR targets instead of 14.7, say 13 or 12. Having that feedback in place allows the engine to verify that you're getting that slightly richer fuel mixture and that combustion is occurring as you plan it to whenever you're under those heavy load operations. Now let's talk about open loop operation. Open loop operation is when the car is no longer looking at inputs from some of the sensors, namely the AFR sensors, but sometimes other sensors as well. The car won't be looking at these for feedback to determine how well the car was able to combust. Instead, it is simply just gonna to be tossing fuel blindly into the engine and saying, this is how much fuel you need. I don't care what the AFRs look like. Just keep throwing fuel at it. This is what it's supposed to get. So in open loop operation, it's only running primarily off of your fuel tables. Depending on the type of car, if it has long-term fuel trims, it might use those as well. But your short-term fuel trims pretty much become null. It's no longer trying to calculate any short-term adjustments to your fuel based off of your AFR sensors. The AFR sensors will still be reporting data, but the engine is just going to completely ignore it. Now, upon first hearing this, open loop operation might not sound ideal because your AFRs are pretty much an unknown because your engine's not looking at them. Um, so you can't really confirm that you're getting great combustion from the engine, but open loop operation is actually critical to the safety of the engine under certain conditions, um, primarily whenever the sensors are not operating in their specified ranges to be able to give you accurate feedback data so that the engine can use that and adjust your fueling. So, an example of this is gonna be when the car first starts up in the morning. So AFR sensors do not work unless they're up to operating temperature. They're specifically designed to be able to give you accurate AFR readings whenever they're up to temp. I think it's something like 800 degrees C. Um, I'll put a correction here on screen if I'm wrong. But AFR sensors are heated up typically in two ways. Either they'll have a heating element inside them. In the case of the 370s, there'll be a heating element where you just pass current through it to heat those sensors up, and that takes a little bit of time. 
Some engines also use the exhaust pipes themselves and the exhaust gas to heat up those AFR sensors. So when the engine first starts up, it's gonna be an open loop until those sensors can get up to operating temp and can give you accurate AFR readings back. You don't wanna start using those readings if those AFR sensors are giving you bogus data. Otherwise, you might run the engine a little too rich or even worse, you may be running it way too lean and you might be getting a ton of knock. So it's really important to ensure that the sensors are in a safe operating range so that it actually gets you accurate data back to the vehicle. Other examples of when the car purposely runs in open loop includes when it detects that there's a bad sensor. So if it detects that your AFR sensor is having a problem, maybe it's not responding at all, or for whatever reason, it's not heating up correctly, the car will choose to ignore the input from that sensor because it can't rely on that data and it'll just run the car in open loop. Um, another example is under wide open throttle. So depending on the type of vehicle that you have, you may not have a wide band AFR sensor. Some cars will only have a narrow band where basically it's good enough at detecting if the car is running lean or if it's running rich, but it can't really tell you by how much. It can say it's higher or it's lower than 14.7 and that's all it's good for. When you're under wide open throttle, however, you don't want to be running a 14.7 AFR. You want to be running the engine a little bit richer. And so for that, you'll be hitting an AFR of maybe 13 or 12. But if you have a narrow band sensor, the car is not going to be able to accurately tell you if you're hitting around that target. So instead, the engine is going to run in open loop. It's going to ignore what that sensor is telling you. And instead, it's just going to be looking at the pre-programmed fuel tables to know how much fuel it's supposed to be getting within that operating range. In the case of the VQ37 motor that comes in my 370Z, the car actually comes with wideband AFR sensors from the factory as standard. However, it's interesting to note that our cars still run in open loop under wide open throttle conditions, which I would think if your AFR sensors are reading accurate data, you'd be able to make fuel adjustments fairly confidently based off of these readings but they've decided that the car needs to run in open loop despite that. So wide open throttle is one of those cases as well where the car is gonna be running in open loop. Open loop operation is actually important to ensuring that the engine runs smoothly under certain conditions. However, open loop operation does also come with its certain distinct disadvantages. For instance, when you have a car with multiple cylinder banks, in the case of the V6 that I've got in my car, they've got two. So whenever you're running an open loop, you lose individual bank control. Sometimes the car is supposed to run with a little bit more fuel on one bank or the other, just depending on maybe, for instance, your intake or exhaust setup. Um, you might need to run a little bit more fuel in one bank than the other to make sure that it runs efficiently, safely, or to be able to get you the most power. And when you run an open loop, you're basically becoming completely blind to the fact that one of these banks needs to run richer than the other, and you're basically just tossing a set amount of fuel at both banks. So that's one area where you do end up losing a little bit of efficiency from whenever you're running in open loop. You also lose the ability to confirm what your exhaust AFR is and to ensure that you're getting proper combustion from the engine. And then you also lose out on the learning mechanisms. Now this may not be a bad thing because your learning mechanisms are primarily, for instance, to make sure that your car is running efficiently at cruising. Um, however, if you run the car just in straight open loop, if you get the car tuned from a certain tuner that just leaves the car in open loop all the time, it means that you're gonna lose out on the ability to be able to learn your long-term fuel trims and to be able to adjust the car dynamically as the car, for instance, begins to age or wear down. Um, so if you just run the car blindly in open loop all the time, it's not gonna be able to make some of those dynamic adjustments that it's really gonna need to be able to run efficiently over time. So now let's talk about how to tell if your car is in open loop or in closed loop. The easiest way to do this is to data log the car. I use the Ecutech app to do this. Uh, whenever we are logging, if I'm cruising along like I am now, I can check out my short-term fuel trims and I can see that there's constant adjustments being made to be able to keep the AFR readings at 14.7 to make sure that we are at stoic and that the engine is running very efficiently. However, if I downshift, give it a lot of throttles, wide open throttle, we can actually see that the short term fuel trends become completely flatlined. This is because during wide open throttle, it's no longer looking at your short term fuel trims anymore. It's just using those fueling tables to be able to give you the set amount of fuel that you're going to need. Now, as you're driving your car around town, as you're data logging, you should see the car constantly switching between closed and open loop, just depending on the mode of operation of the vehicle. 
However, if you notice that your short-term fuel trims are always flatline and that the car is just constantly in open loop, it may mean that your tuner permanently put it in a mode of open loop operation, and this may or may not be a good thing. Another reason why your tuner might disable closed loop operation permanently is if you only have narrowband sensors installed on your exhaust banks. Narrowband sensors are very good at telling you if you're at, say, 14.7 for your AFR, or if you're higher or lower, but it can't really tell you how much higher or how much lower your AFR are sitting at. Now, if you're trying to run a richer fuel mixture, say your car is boosted and your tuner decides they want to add a little bit more fuel so that the car runs safely, um, or if, for instance, you're trying to run ethanol and you're targeting a lower AFR number, your narrowband sensor is not going to be able to pick this up. So if you're in closed loop operation, your narrowband sensor is constantly going to be telling the car to try and lean the mixture back out, and that could potentially cause damage to the engine in the form of NOx. So that's one of the reasons why your tuner might permanently disable it. Now, ideally, you should invest in a wideband O2 sensor, so that way you can accurately read AFRs as low as 10, 11, 12, whatever it is your tuner is trying to target. Um, so yeah, wideband sensors are really important. And in the case of the 370s, we're fortunate enough to have wideband sensors install on the car from the factory, um, even though for whatever reason, still under wide open throttle, our cars go into open loop. But that's for another discussion. Um, but yeah, wideband O2 sensors are very important to try and help in the tuning process and ensuring that your car can still maintain closed loop operation. And this doesn't just apply to AFR sensors. If your tuner has a lack of confidence in say the readings from your mass airflow sensors um, or any of the other sensors or data that's coming in from the car, they may choose to go into open loop to try and ignore some of that sensor feedback. Now, a lot of tuners will also tune in open loop initially when they're trying to get a base tune for the car. They just wanna turn off all of the feedback from the car, prevent it from trying to lean out or enrich in the fuel. They'll try and get your base fuel map as well as your target AFR set, and then they'll go and re-enable closed loop mode to ensure that the car tries to maintain those targets over time. However, some tuners might get lazy and they don't re-enable closed loop operation like they should. They might be struggling to try and get the car to run well whenever the closed loop mechanisms come back into play. Maybe the car is idling roughly at closed loop, and instead of trying to understand what the problem is, they might just leave it in open loop because they've got the car running great on that particular day. They're making great power with the vehicle. The customer is happy with the results. So they decide not to really tell them. They'll just leave it in open loop. And yeah, the car is going to run great under that particular day, under those conditions. However, leaving a car in open loop means that the car will not have those compensation mechanisms if you decide to, for instance, change your altitude drastically. Maybe you got tuned at sea level and now you're going up into higher altitude. Altitude. Now the car does, in our case, with the VQ37 motor, I mean it has MAF sensors, it has MAF sensors as well, um, to be able to try and compensate for these things. But the car is not going to be able to guarantee that you're hitting your AFR targets unless it's getting that closed loop feedback. So if you're running an open loop, you're at risk of the car really not running well if you decide to take the car out to a different climate or if maybe it gets really cold and the car was tuned during summer, you're at risk of the car not being able to run well and compensate properly for the conditions of the road whenever you are running an open loop operation. In open loop, you're simply saying, here's the amount of fuel that we needed to be able to make the car run great on the dyno on that day, best of luck. The other reason why it's bad to leave the car in open loop 100% of the time is over time your car is going to need to make adjustments to the fueling as the engine wears. You may need to add or take away a little bit of fuel just depending on how the engine ends up wearing down over time. And if you leave it in open loop, you're not gonna have this compensation mechanism to ensure that the car is running well today as well as a couple of years down the line. Now you can't always take the car back in and get it retuned, that way it's still running at optimal performance, but this is just one of those things that you lose out on by ignoring your AFR sensors and ignoring the car's ability to be able to adjust your fuel dynamically over time and with your driving conditions. Just understand that open loop operation is not always a bad thing and in fact your car does this from the factory under certain conditions anyways and then depending on what sort of mods you've done to the car, what type of car you're driving, what sort of sensors come on it to begin with, in order to get your car to run correctly at all it might be necessary to put it into open loop anyways. But that's my video on open versus closed loop operation guys. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Also, if you're trying to understand the particular needs for your vehicle, I highly recommend having a conversation with your tuner. Your tuner should be open about the requirements for tuning your vehicle, whether you may need to upgrade your AFR sensors, that sort of thing. So just keep in touch with your tuner. Make sure that they're constantly explaining to you what they're planning on doing to the vehicle whenever you take it in to get a tune. But that's it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Later.